Hey friends, I'm Stephanie Fleece and you're listening to a new addition to our podcast lineup, Just a Sprinkle with Steph. So I love to celebrate. It's kind of my thing. In fact, our other podcast is called Just Add Sprinkle Celebrating Motherhood because I believe that even in the bad days, there is always something to celebrate. And my favorite way to celebrate is to add sprinkles. So Just a Sprinkle with Steph episodes are quick check-ins with me. Uh, It's a chance for me to share my heart with you, my fellow moms. I'll chat about both professional and personal tips that I found to be useful over the past 10 years of motherhood and entrepreneurship. I am so excited to share these little sprinkles of encouragement with you and hopefully lift your spirits a bit. Think of these Just a Sprinkle with Steph episodes as girl talk with a dash of big sister love mixed in. Because sometimes just a sprinkle is all you need. So let's get started. So my own motherhood journey began in July of 2009 with the birth of our oldest daughter. Then 20 mon- 21 months later, in May of 2011, our second daughter uh, came into the world. And then in February of 2013, that's just 21 months after that, our third daughter came into the world. So you heard that right. I am the mom of not just one, not just two, but three daughters. And I consider it an incredible privilege and honor to raise strong, confident, successful women and launch them into the world. But that doesn't go without being some deliberate, intentional parenting. So here's the truth. I am nowhere near an expert when it comes to sharing tips on raising daughters. While I may have three daughters of my own and I have gone through 10 years of motherhood, I am still learning. I am in the trenches with all of you. And so for this episode, I actually have um, reached out to a number of my mentors um, that have mentored me over the past few years that have raised successful daughters. And successful, when I define successful, I do not mean that they haven't had their faults, that they haven't had their problems, um, but that they have launched them into the future uh, with confidence. And so uh, the four tips that I'm going to share with you today on tips for raising daughters come from them. Uh, I'll share a little bit of sprinkles here and there of how they've played, these tips have played out in my life and my motherhood journey and raising my three girls. Um, But just a reminder that these tips are coming from um, some really wise mom that have come alongside of me over the years. So a special thank you to Darcy and Tracy and Lori and Jenny who shared their insights. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, My first tip is to give your daughters the freedom to be unique. That means that we have to, as moms, guard against seeing ourselves in them. Our daughters are unique individuals. They have unique strengths and they have unique dreams and abilities. They are separate from us. And if we learn to be students of our girls, figuring out what they desire in life, what they dream of, what they aspire to be, we avoid the pitfalls of forcing them to be someone that they are not. Let's be honest, the world will constantly be coming at them with um, messages of them feeling like they're not good enough and that their uniquenesses need to change and be morphed into something different than who they are. And our homes and us being their moms, we have to be a safe place for them to be able to come to and be able to share those dreams even if they're different than us. So one example that I love to be able to share about this is um, an idea that I learned early on in parenting, and it's called the whoosh principle. Uh, A friend shared it with me, and it has stuck with me for so long. So bear with me as I kind of walk through this. Uh, The whoosh principle is essentially the idea that any time we feel threatened or a person feels threatened, it might be life-threatening or it might just be someone disagreeing with you, there is a whoosh that comes up inside of us. There's one main emotion that whooshes in our whole body and takes over. Uh, Our kids have this too. And interestingly enough, they probably have a different whoosh than you. 
So here's um, some practical examples of how this plays out in little girls, and not just little girls, but little boys as well. Uh, so one of my daughters has the anger whoosh, which what that meant as a two-year-old is that any time one of her friends or sisters took something from her, she would immediately grab it from them and take it out of their hands. Uh, she was also the biter. She was the one that I that was pushing and I was so humiliated. I felt like a terrible mom because her propensity, her whoosh was anger, right? It's a justice whoosh as well. T two of my girls have a sadness whoosh, which means that anytime they're threatened, they immediately go to tears. And um, they are looked upon with more sensitivity. I would say um, the world in general has more sensitivity towards a sadness whoosh than an anger whoosh. Uh, now my husband uh, has the retreat whoosh, which means that anytime he's threatened, um, he retreats. Uh, and here's the important thing about the whoosh principle and the idea of giving our daughters the freedom to be unique. Each one of those whooshes, neither of them are bad. They're all different. And we have to harness and encourage our daughters to understand that in that whoosh, they obviously cannot do X, Y, and Z. Um, they can't push. They cannot be unkind. Um, there are rules that we live by, um, but truthfully, anytime that we start to think that uh, one is wrong, uh, say the anger whoosh is wrong, um, I, I want my daughter who has the propensity for justice and the anger whoosh to be one that fights for injustice later on in life. I want her to stand up. I want her to use those gifts she's been giving for good. But in those training years, we spent so much time redirecting, saying, I know you're angry, but you cannot do this. And the same with our other two. I know you're sad, but you cannot do this in your sadness. Uh, so that whoosh principle has helped me so much uh, to really address how they're feeling in the moment, but also be keenly aware of their uniquenesses, which are different from me, and that's okay. I want to raise daughters who are unique. The second tip uh, is to resist the urge to tweak your daughter day and night. Don't see your job as helping your daughter reach perfection aka your standard of perfection. Uh, so one of my mentors actually shared um, this word with me that I think is super encouraging when it comes to the tendency to tweak our daughters. This is what she says. Uh, she said, our daughters have enough people in their lives that are evaluating and reviewing her or comparing her to an unachievable standard. Moms so many times see their gentle or not so gentle suggestions to be in their daughter's best interest and done out of love for her. That may be somewhat true, but it isn't how our daughters receive our feedback best. If tweaking becomes characteristic of a mom-daughter relationship, the daughter will lead with a defensive attitude. She'll share less of who she is and disregard even the good suggestions that may truly help her. Our daughters need someone us as their moms to delight in them and all their quir quirkiness and wonderful uniqueness. They need to know that no matter what, we are in their corner and who they are and what they do apart from disobedience is okay with us. Resist the urge to tweak your daughter day and night. That is such a good word for us. So tip three, be the kind of woman your daughter wants to emulate. Um, they say that more is caught than taught, right? Our daughters are watching us. Our daughters are watching how we interact with our partners, how we treat our friends, how we speak about people behind their backs. They are sponges. They are learning from us. And so we need to be the kind of women that they want to emulate and that you want to raise into adulthood. So whether we like it or not, our daughters are going to grow up to be like us. And that can be a really awesome thing if we're humble and loving, but it also can be a bad thing in a lot of other ways. 
So you, I have to constantly remind myself, be the type of woman that I want my girls to grow up to be like. And not in a prideful way, but in a way that honors people, that is kind, that is generous. Um, be mindful of the example you're setting with your daughters. The fourth and final tip is to be a safe place for her. Bake together, have dance parties together, uh, just hang out with her, volunteer to lead her clubs. Uh, quality time unlocks the heart of a child and you have to earn the right to be heard. One of the things that I often tell my girls as they go to bed, uh, I try to carve out individual time with each one of them um, as they're laying down. And I, I, I tell them, uh, you know, no question is a bad question. So what question do you have for mommy tonight? Uh, it's been told, said that the early morning uh, hours and then their late hours when they're going to bed are when kids are the most sensitive and willing to talk about things that are on their minds. And so I always try to take the opportunity at the end of the day to ask them what question do they have burning in their minds. I want them to come to me with questions that maybe I can't even answer, but ones that I want to be the place they come to for direction and guidance. Uh, I want to be a safe place for my daughters, which means that I lead with no question is a silly question. Please come to me with any question that you have. So I've got a bonus tip um, on top of my four tips. Uh, and this, this bonus tip in particular is for those of you that are raising multiple daughters. As I mentioned, I've got three. Uh, and this is something that was shared with me early on in parenting uh, and something that I tell my girls all of the time. I remind them, again, this is a tip for those of you that have multiple girls. <laughs> your sisters are your forever friends. Your sisters are your forever friends. So they're gonna have friends that come and go in life. Friends are wonderful. I love friends. I encourage my girls to have strong friendships because that really does make a significant difference in their lives. But they will come back to each other. Their sisters are their forever friends. And this is important because anytime that we have, are, are encouraging our daughters to offer grace or forgiveness to each other, it restores the relationship that is a forever friendship with their sister. So over and over again, I'm saying your sisters are your forever friends. Your sisters are your forever friends. And so we are always looking towards rest restoration and deepening of relationships. So just a reminder, give them the freedom to be unique, resist the urge to tweak your daughter day and night, be the kind of woman your daughter wants to emulate, and be a safe place for her. And, that, and then that bonus tip is that for those of you raising multiple girls, your sisters are your forever friends. One of the most wonderful, empowering human bond in all of life is one's mom. So we need each other in times of pain and discouragement and during times of celebration and joy. There are so many wonderful things that we can do with our daughters as we raise them up in our homes and send them forth into the future. I hope that these tips prove to be an encouragement to you, to those of you that are raising daughters. Uh, they certainly were for me as I received them from these various mentors. So thanks for spending a little chunk of time with me today, friends. I love sharing little sprinkles of encouragement with you and look forward to the next episode. Until then, I hope you find small ways to celebrate your own motherhood today and always. And don't forget to just add sprinkles. <laughs>